here. Let's see. Welcome back, everybody, to the next episode of Stone Shard. Getting that out of the way. Uh, we want to first, before we start playing here, I wanted to talk about a few things. And we'll keep it in the Stone Shard area first with uh, talking about the new update. Hmm. And I wanted to put that up on screen for you guys. So let me go ahead and do just that. If I click here. Welcome back, everybody, to another uh, episode of Stone Shard. Gonna turn down the music ever so slightly here while I'm talking about other things. In fact, I'll just turn it off. Boop. Uh, there is a new out update out for Stone Shard this weekend, or not weekend, but week in general. And uh, I will go through it with it, go through it real quick right here, just for those that have not been keeping up with the news. It is not a huge one, but it is some nice quality of life stuff. There's some minor bug fixes, some additions to the game, and so I'll scroll through it here. But there's a new um, new points of interest and special improvements to some of the points of interest. Mm -hmm. Order circle and the order's prison. Okay. A new task to the Manshire Priest. We'll have to check that out. Uh, five, six new types of mid-tier Restless, the zombie guys. Uh, ten new types of high-tier bandits. Three new abilities that come with them. And I'm not sure if we, as the player, will have access to those, but I don't think so. Uh, new helmets and new shields. New boots. Cool. Uh, folio. Another book to read and gain XP off of. New unique spear. New bow. Then the Ghoulons have been gotten their abilities, like I predicted that they would. And uh, Harpy Nests have added X, so that you can probably loot those, maybe cook them and eat them, stuff like that. Uh, maybe they'll be used for alchemy later, so there's more reasons to go and uh, loot the Harpies. Uh, we have not found many Harpies throughout my playthrough so far, but maybe there will be more of them now. And rumors for new points of interest. Uh-huh. Then there is a slew of fixes, and I will not highlight all of them. There are a few, though, that I think are really interesting. Uh, some people have been complaining uh, not about this one. Ah, okay, I'll see if I can spot it. There was um, enemies being able to enter walls with maneuver. I saw some people on Reddit posting about this one particular, particularly. Um, so that should have been fixed now. Very good. Uh, then there was another, yeah, you, you can no longer reflect seal of reflection with seal of reflection. Um, and then I'm looking specifically for the, uh, the I, I can't spot it right now, but um, uh, the accuracy of throwing items uh, has been increased in general, just across the board, which would have been very helpful in my dagger throwing run. Uh, but also it's really useful for, like, um, we've tried throwing bottles at the enemies for, like, using potions, negative potions on the enemy. Or we've tried uh, using the bombs, and the bombs have very had very low accuracy, so hopefully they're, like, a little bit more easy to hit with now. Some balance down here at the bottom. Ah, here it is. Increased base accuracy for thrown items. Okay, that's in balance, not fixes, of course. New pyromancy spells to sorcerers. Cauterized wounds can now remove the effect of gaping wound. Really interesting. I wonder if that is in the text description. I want to try to look at that. Cauterized wounds, or that's something you just got to know. Lexweed now has a, ch a chance to stagger the targets if it fails to mobilize. And I think it already did that, but it wasn't shown in the text. So I think what this means is that they have added it to the text. Mm -mm -mm. Nerfed opportune moment. Piercing shot has been nerfed, so it doesn't auto hit. Which is interesting, because we are going to go in and play a ranged build now. Uh, before we do that, then, I want to scroll further down. There's a new roadmap, and we start by going through all the stuff that has been released already. Not so super interesting. Then we are going into the coming next section, the Rags to Riches which uh, mainly, I think, focuses on this caravan mechanic, which seems to be... Uh, supposed, it's supposed to be like fleshed out during this update. So we'll see if that works uh, and how that works. Uh, contracts rework. Very nice. Dungeons and settlement modifiers. Improved dungeon generation. Improved economy. New ability tree armor. And then new points of interest. And cooking. 
not a high priority for myself, but I think a lot of people will enjoy that. Coming soon, there's no dates on anything here, so we'll have to just like see when stuff happens. And so these are the two like updates coming. Venom in the Waters contains a new boss, and I think that is something with either, if I have to guess, it's either like a Hydra hiding underwater or like a hag in hiding in a swamp. That could be really cool. So yeah, a uh, high priority then is like off of the updates, there are other things that are being added as the game goes on and character generator, a character creator is at the top of this list. I know a lot of people are asking for this and so that is coming soon, trademark. Uh, character traits, new side quest, lockpicking mechanic. I really hope they... I really hope they don't make it a skill-based system because why would you make it a skill-based system when everything else is lock-based? That's just my opinion. Uh, new enemy factions, remaining ability trees. Remaining ability trees. Okay, well, that's just in general, high priority. Okay, cool. Random encounters and more points of interest. Also up here, they had the wand and the new magic school. Probably Venom NC, eh? All right. And then before we start playing, there's one last thing, because then there was a, a hot fix to follow up on that. And um, I'm not going to read anything out here. It's just to let you know that if you have been playing and then you noticed some errors, they might have been fixed like so. And now we will go into the game. So let me click there. Then uh, boom, 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 boom. Ronan and a blunt arrow. How'd you do? Let me give you guys a game to look at now instead of this thing here <laughs> Boop. and there slide it over beep bobbin <laughs> beep beep bobbin beep bop -ba -ba. how are you i be be gaming i'm playing in the new mate quit tournament for two two versus two, two versus two ronan so we i'm, I'm sure you will be in Division, uh, Division 1, if you are participating. Uh, but I am not. I'm in Division 2. I was excited. So excited to uh, see your results. Oh, okay. Yeah, we didn't do super well in the um, qualifying thing, sadly. But uh, I have not played for a long time, so that is not super surprising, I suppose. Now we will hit continue, no, new game. Character slots are full, really. Okay, let me delete something. Ah. New game, and we are not doing permitted. And I have a little talk that I want to go through about that here. I forgot about. So here I am. And then we are hitting Durban right now. So? Good. Let me do another thing. Can I do this? Good. <laughs> Back in the game. Uh, we are going to be playing a, uh, a, a non permitted run. I have decided that Kitchen will be the not permadeath guy, at least for a good while. If you guys are interested in watching permadeath runs, I have been following just recently this guy called Erevin. He's been also been chatting around here recently. I will think of him not as my rival, but as my colleague in Stone Shard. And he's a very good player. He plays Stone Shard very differently from how I play it. He's a lot more careful and slow and calculated. And... Um, I would say more skilled, but he also plays like every day, and I, I don't have the time for that. So go check him out. He's a really good stone shot player if you want to get some a lot of stone shot content in. Um, he does everything permadeath, and he does this thing where the problem with permadeath, I find, is that we do the, the, the opening section of the game where it's kind of boring. The two, maybe four or five first levels of the game are not the best or most interesting. So he does this little cheating thing where he... Um, he plays a character up to level three, then makes a uh, a seed off of that. Like he, you can you can copy your save file into a different folder, 
And so if he ever dies in permadeath, he will reload this save file back into his main folder for the game and then start a new character at level three. So, so in his playthroughs, you never see uh, the first dungeon or the brewery quest, which I think is kind of interesting. And I thought about doing it on my own. But then I decided, you know what, I want to do things differently. I like this thing where we are not playing permadeath and I get to sort of test things. Uh, in the previous stream, we played two permadeath runs and I died pretty early in both of them before we even finished the brewery quest. And it was immensely frustrating. So I decided that, no, I will I will not do what Erevin is doing. I will do the, the whole thing from the bottom up so we get to see all of the stuff and learn how to do the first dungeon and the brewery quest better. And um and just play it my own way, you know. And uh yeah. With that out of the way, this is a Durvan ranged slash survival playthrough. There's also this thing about um not playing on permadeath, I can be a little bit more experimental with the things that I do with my build and how I play, what kind of challenges we take on and a little bit more risky, which I like. And one of the things, one of the reasons that we are doing a Durvan playthrough specifically is because of, in the previous stream, I talked at length about uh, Durvan's trait here, the sharp eye. And I, I will go through it again, but we have a new knowledge to work with here. It says the first attack that hits an enemy applies them... Uh, the, oh, they changed this one. First attack... Am I crazy? They, this was different in my last stream, so this has been updated, I think. Or, or otherwise, I am in, in fact insane and, or, and I have no memory. It used to be the first time you spot an enemy, you would apply them with this debuff here. Now it says the first attack that hits an enemy applies them with minus 20% dodge chance and extra damage taken for 10 turns. So they've changed it, just as I was about to abuse the old mechanic. All right, then. Probably because they found out that people were abusing the old mechanic. Uh, so what? apparently what we've learned, what Erevin learned and told me uh, on Discord, is that you can... It, it, it used to be that you could break vision from an enemy and then reset this counter so that... Uh, we discussed that at the end of the previous stream, and I didn't really believe it, but it is true. You could break vision and it would reset the, the 10 turn counter. So if you close a door in the face of an enemy and open it again, the counter would go back to 10 turns... No matter how many times you do it, you can reset it and get the... And it's a pretty big debuff, like 20% dodge and 20% damage. That's a huge debuff. So now they've changed it so that it's the first attack. And I wonder then if we can reset the buff. But probably not anymore when it's the first attack. But then I used to think that we couldn't reset it. And ah, Okay, we're going to do it anyway. Play Durbin Run. Here we go. It still is better than what I thought it was before. Very interesting. They were on to you. Yes, you're right. Now we will play the game. And in here, I am going to grab a ranged weapon and take the crossbow. Because the crossbow sells for the most money, so we will just go and sell it. That is what I've been told, anyway. Fugitive's hand. I'll do it. Uh, how about a chat? Okay. Oh, this, this is one of the new heater shields. Look at that. It's a new little pattern on it. Nice. They've changed the color of bread. There was a Reddit post about that, and indeed it is changed. Different color than it used to be for some reason. I will buy the Caltrops. We will now go and talk to Jörg. And I have learned, through a little bit of testing, that you are indeed supposed to do this bit of dialogue before you uh, do 
ask for the brewer request by ODAR. And again, I swear it used, didn't used to be like that, but this is how you do it. You, and I, I suggest anyone just go and do that immediately when you start off your first run, go and talk to Jörg and uh, get this dialogue out of the way so that you don't forget it later. That's how I'm going to roll it. There. Now we've done that part of the dialogue. We'll sell those two and keep the bow. We're lurking, no worries. Thank you for stopping by, Ronan. No, Ronan is not into stone shot, so it is no problem. I understand. He likes them shooting games. Uh, we will sell the apprentice cow. Let's give energy restoration, which is not terrible. Might be useless. Forester hat will give you extra accuracy, though, which is kind of nice. Or we could probably do the first dungeon without buying too much. I'll, I'll reduce our fumble chance by 1% for 25 gold. Sure. Uh, we can't see the better cloak here. I'll leave it at that for now. We shouldn't need like huge equipment upgrades at the beginning of an archer run, because the first few levels should be fairly easy. It'll, it's the late game where it gets really hard, so just gotta get to it. Two splints, four healing cells, and two sets of bandages. I will recommend everyone to bring at least two sets of bandages. They cost six coins for that bit of survival that you get for them. Um, the splints and the healing self have been increased in in value, so you, they are not necessarily an automatic buy at the beginning of a game anymore. Like they are pretty expensive, but affordable in moderate amounts. I didn't bring extra food, but I think we will be fine with that. Yeah. I'll grab some mushrooms, and I notice the dungeon is not too far out. And uh, let me talk about our build now. We are going to get the aimed shot, taking aim. And we are going to get the distracting shot right away. Pretty sure. Or the, sub the skinning. I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the whole skinning line in this playthrough. Something I wouldn't do if it was a permadeath run. But uh, we will try it out. Give it a go uh, shot, I mean, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and and see if we can make good money off of it. Maybe it'll be worth it. Maybe it'll have the best equipment in the game because I am making more money. We might even do a bit of like straight up hunting. Um, I won't take the skinning right away here because we don't, we don't need it until we have an animal to skin in front of us. Skarsnik, how you do? I know how you do, because we were playing a game just recently. Skarsnik and I have been playing Dark Tide, the closed beta. So, if you guys haven't heard about it, there's this... Uh, it's like Warhammer Vermintide, but in 40k, so... Uh, Vermintide, but with sci-fi sci -fi action. And it's pretty good, pretty interesting game. Very expensive though, but it was free in the close beta, so uh, everyone can go and request access to it right now and hope to get access before the close beta ends, which should be soon. So get it while it's still hot. Oh, look at this, there's two points of interest out here. I will go and discover this one down here. And I noticed we've, we found these even though they're like one tile further out, but maybe we detect points of interest now at range plus one. That would be interesting. Point of interesting. No. No, bad, Keech. Bad. <laughs> Let me start gathering some stick to cook sticks to cook all this food, just in case we are not moving into a bandit camp here. I forget how many we need. No more. Ugh. 
Look at me using the survival skills. Here we go. Don't forget to extinguish the uh, flames before you leave. Maybe even douse it with a bit of um, water before you, you know, leave the camp behind. There might be some embers that could ignite and start a forest fire. So only you can prevent forest fires. Now a bandit camp here would be nice. And here they are, perfect. Nice. Oh, I've not missed a shot yet. Oh, he sat back down? Ah, oh, come on. And he sits back down. That's new. Might be some new behavior we're seeing here. Or, well, I should say it's definitely some new behavior. That is an upgrade to our Dirk. Only two guys in this bandit camp, huh? Cool, cool, cool. Some skins already. Dog pelt. We could go back to the town. In fact, I'm gonna hit up this point of interest and then just go back to town and sell the, the pelt and stuff. Might yet do some hunting as we're out here. Oh yeah, we are definitely detecting points of interest at an extra range now. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, here. Yeah, I'll go further out. Yeah, let's do some exploration to begin the run. Why not? Ah, we're supposed to hunt these things, of course. That cost me an arrow, though, so it's hardly even worth it. Except for the XP, which is nice. Oh, here we go. Ah. Okay, this is going to make exploration so much different when you can detect the, the points of interest without having to be on the actual tile. I like that a lot. It's going to reduce your walking a whole lot across the entirety of the game. Oh, oh, okay. I can kill one wolf, but I can't defeat a whole wolf pack and you know they they howl oh and they have reintroduced good loot into the graves very nice Uh, drop that, drop this. That's a pretty cool shield. And we would like to use a shield early on in this playthrough. This is a wolf hunting ground, I think. 
Or a boar hunting ground. No, I don't want to waste arrows. Uh, so let me go like... Here. This is a hunting location. So I don't forget. We'll hit up this point of interest now. My inventory is almost full already. Hmm. No, it's not. Man, all these new question marks everywhere. I don't know where to go. Uh, this way around, or... I kind of want to go for this one further out and then swing back this way. Yeah, let's do it. This is that rabbit hole that never ends at this point. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, another. Oh, we can only add one. Okay, this is for hunting. This over here might be a dungeon, in fact. Geesh, what playthrough are you doing this time? This is, uh, we are going to do a bit of, a, let's call it a challenge run. I will be going for the skinning, uh, Pathfinder, and Huntmaster uh, survival build. So I have trash talked the survival skills at end in previous playthroughs. And so now I am committing to giving them a chance, you could say. And then it's a ranged Durvin run. So we'll mix in bows and ranged with uh, probably some athletics and then go for the skinning thing. I'm glad you found it funny. This must be a bandit camp. is falling. Oh, whoops. Oh, I misclicked. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize we had a an antidote. Uh, I think permadeath survival is very important tree. The three right squirrels from XM. So we're not playing on permadeath. I had a little bit of a discussion about permadeath at the beginning of this uh, stream here, but um, I have decided that I will not be the permanent guy for a good while. Uh, we have another streamer, Erevin, that you should check out if you want to see permanent uh, playthroughs. Uh, makes asking for rumors a lot less useful now, unless they give you rare locations to explore, that would be cool. Yeah, I mean, it'll still be worth asking, you know, you're in the dialogue option with the guy if anyway, you might as well click the damn button, but... Yeah, you don't have to, to ask for rumors as much. There's this thing, then, when I have gone out here and come back, you know, I'm not if I'm not going to get down here if I don't ever ask for rumors and get a rumor down here, you know. So there's still, like, there's going to be some niche cases where you wouldn't see a location unless you get the rumor. Um, but otherwise, you're right. I mean, it will be less important. So this was the... This was the, the point of interest, the card, I suppose. Must have been. Okay. Let's go outside here. Yeah, it was just a card, a pending card. That's fine. Oh, 
Oh, I'm loving it. This new point of history system already. Like, imagine how much time I've spent trying to get the uh, the rotten willow in in some or yeah in some playthroughs, right? And now it's just gonna be so much easier to find those niche outliers. I think that's a good good addition to the game. Thank you, Skarsnik. Look, a bear! I can take skinning right now and we can get a pear built. Or not. So with skinning in mind, it's interesting to note that we have not really spotted any animals yet on this little trip. That I could possibly fight. So there was a fight over here. This is a boar. I'm going to die. Yes, I'm going to die. Nope. If I fight it, I mean. This should be a point of interest as well, so let's see what we can find here. Oh, no. Oh, they are alarmed already. Oh, and here's the bandits. Okay, I hope we can make this work. Indeed. We will have to help the bandits here. not manage to aggro the wolf in time and this is a problem then. I don't think we can do this. 68% health? the howl. Oh, here come the wolves. Oh, I'm misstepping. I'm on. Uh, now I can't recover my ammo, and so we've just lost money doing this. Maybe I can pull one wolf off of this map tile and onto the next year. And fight them in one at a time here. I am not sure I can do that. Uh, it has dash range what? Three. One, two, three. Damn it. Not good. Oh, and then it dashed. Wow. Well, that's kind of sucky. Okay, I shouldn't try to fight the wolves. I know better. Okay, then. And we will just do the same thing, but not run that far out, I think. We didn't really get anything from going for the outlying. We got the the cart, the abandoned cart out there. It wasn't really worth it. So we'll just go for the, the other point of interest over here. And then head back to town. 
Did not know you don't get XP anymore from the enemy dying near you. You have to have engaged them. So I didn't hit that bandit at all during the fight before the wolf killed him, and so then I don't get the XP. And I'm not sure about the exact rules of this, Gosnik, but like it's, I'm pretty sure that that's how it works. That you have to have dealt damage to an enemy in order to get the XP. I was trying to shoot him, but I didn't land a hit. And I'm surprised though by how how fast I died to the wolf there. I mean, I know the wolf was gonna kill me no matter what, but it just absolutely stomped me. I didn't even have a chance. So yeah, don't fight the wolves for a few levels. Note it. Yeah, we'll just go for this point of interest here, then head back and sell the, the, the pelt and stuff, and then head for the dungeon. Aye. <laughs> oh. Ah, this is where the plane is, I think. Don't kill me. No mercy. He was alone? It is where the plane is, indeed. see the necromancy mod on the stone shard reddit no there's a mod out no way tell me more is this the first you have played in the new update it is indeed sensationless Oof. tell me more about this mod thing Opinions. Um, I like what I've seen so far, but I, we, we are like less than an hour in here, so too early to to give proper feedback. But what I read in the patch notes and what I'm seeing right now, I I think a lot of improvements have been made. I am indeed playing Durvin. Yes, Durvin, Durvin. Yes, and they've changed this trait. This is maybe what why you're trying to point it out, but it it used to say the first time you spot an enemy, you apply the debuff to them. Now it's the first time you hit an enemy, you apply a debuff to them for ten turns. And then we learned that there's there was a thing with the previous ver uh, version of that trait, but now we're not sure if that you could reset the trait before. I don't think you can reset the trait now but i didn't think that before either so who knows man how would you reset it though i don't think so yeah but it's definitely much better as far as intentions go Back in Old Osbrook, they add a camel in Minecraft. <laughs> a bit off topic there, but sure. I am not happy they are making Gulan stronger. I think they were a kind of a boring enemy before, but hopefully, like. I had a lot of talk about this particular thing in games. When you are giving the Gulans um, abilities, 
you know, before they have really like health and damage stats. Now you're giving them abilities, so surely you will have to then reduce their health and base damage to make them on level with what they were before. That is my expectation that that is what they've done. And if not, then then I am agreeing with you, but it's also like, it's a cool enemy. They are a mythological creature. They are allowed to be strong, but I, didn't, I have not fought them in the new update, so I can't comment further than that. Uh, can we pet the cat? No. Can't pet the cat. Bad game on install. Here. Boring, but we're tanky, and I could never be two before unless I baited one away. And so, has that changed? That is some really good loot here in the tavern. Huh. Didn't expect that. Maybe we should go steal some stuff. They've changed it so that stuff, uh, the, uh, the food doesn't rot uh, in the shops and on the, uh, in the different areas like in here maybe they will once i've picked them up though does this remove the stolen tag from this item i wonder it it definitely looks like it's gone no no doubt about that but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is uh, which dog pills is mine that one there good bottle of oil drop it And here is a link to the necromancer mod, I suppose. Uh, we won't be checking that out during the stream. Dark skin lol, yeah. What the dark doing? It did. Uh, funny every time. Is the jerk better than the peasant flail? No. I will buy your identification scrolls if you have any. Oh, we found that cool shield in a grave before I died. And now we've lost that one. That's too bad. That was a really cool shield. Oh, well. I could keep the dirk and throw it at people. 16 money, it doesn't feel like it's worth selling. Honestly, for this small survival that I get out of having a throwing dagger, even if I dump it in a dungeon, fine, I'll just keep it. Uh, here we need ammo. And I prefer botkin arrows at the beginning of the game. But we would like to buy a quiver ASAP. Uh, clearly, you are not a dog lover, skinning them dog for days. I have not skinned any of these dogs myself. In fact, there is just dog skins lying around. Everyone else is skinning dogs. I'm just profiting off of it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I'm not saying I wouldn't skin a dog. I'm just saying I haven't done it yet. Um, brain work, uh, quiver, quiver, that's what we came here for, you do have a quiver for sale, okay, 210, eesh. and I'm not going to be able to afford arrows. And there's a chance to find a quiver in the first dungeon if you kill enough archers. So that seems like a bad trade right now. I'm going to go over here and dump the plane in front of this guy. We'll need it for later. 
It's a surprise too. We'll meet later. There's an acrimony. And a spearmint. No way. How about that? And a rhubarb. Okay. Well. I want to, want to see a Mr. Stab dude again. Now the base thrown accuracy has been buffed. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again for a while. But uh, I hear you. That would have been a really nice thing before I played that run. But there's always, you know, that's the life. You can't, can't predict those things. And we don't need this right now. Good. Let's finally head to the dungeon. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, to repair my weapon, maybe. I was also going to repair this ring here. Yeah. Uh, throwing knives would go well with stealth in game for sure. I don't know if you saw the roadmap, but the stealth mechanic is very low priority. So, not for a good while. <laughs> 